There's the time-worn adage, buyer beware. But as consumers of media, should the term also apply? Most viewers trust, or at least believe, that if a journalist presents a story, it is presumed to be true. Perhaps the story should read, viewer beware. One man has dedicated his life's work to the pursuit of educating audiences across the country of this edict through elaborate satirical hoaxes. Some people in the news media have panned his apparent altruism by writing him off as a mere nuisance due to his obstructing the flow of legitimate news to viewers at home. Some may also argue that his work is done in poor taste, but Joey Skaggs sees his work in a very different light. I'm an artist and uh, I use the media as a medium, like a painter would use a canvas. And I create social, political, satirical, theatrical performances that are designed to fool the news media. With an array of characters and contrived scenarios played out in clever, effective press releases, Joey Skaggs has been quite successful in fooling the media for almost 40 years, like with his 1996 Solomon Project hoax, as covered by CNN. It was about, you know, artificial intelligence, you know, mankind versus the machine, you know, uh, do we use it, don't we use it, when is it uh, appropriate to use it, is it ever going to be appropriate to use it for judging, you know, if a, if a person has committed a crime, a serious crime or not. So that was, it was, a, it was a, a good ethical issue. When jurors found O.J. Simpson not guilty, more than a difference of opinion separated them from New York computer scientist Joseph Benuso. We found O.J. guilty beyond reasonable doubt. He was guilty of murder. Benuso is one of many these days who sustain an objection to a jury's ability to mete out justice. A jury is a manipulated group of puppets. As designed, the Solomon Project at the New York University Law School is supposed to take the jury out of jurisprudence, casting all trials to the impartiality of artificial intelligence. Those Solomon was tested on some highly sensational cases. Testimony, evidence, and precedents were entered into the computer, and a complicated formula using fuzzy logic helped render a verdict. The OJ phenomenon just helped to move it along and made the media want to get that story. CNN had to get that story. And I'm able to package that in a way that um, makes it attractive to them. It's salacious or it's, you know, it's technological or it's, uh, it's amazing or it's outrageous or it's absurd. And speaking of absurd, here is Skaggs posing as a cockroach doctor in this 1981 hoax which aired on a local NBC affiliate. A man with a mission. He is the head of a group called Metamorphosis, and he thinks that cockroaches are very important to all of us. Sue and I are delighted to welcome Dr. Joseph Gregor to Live at Five. Doctor, it's nice to have you with us. You have completed a rather exhaustive study, and in your words, the future of mankind lies in the cockroach. Would you explain a little by what you <coughs> mean by that? I'll be very happy to. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'm an entomologist. I've been doing research with roaches over the past 10 years. And I believe that roaches are the key to human survival. We should make sure we're talking about the little things that walk around, right? Several well. months later, Skaggs revealed this hoax in an exclusive interview to People magazine. In 1983, Skaggs moved on to the high seas for his satirical inspiration with his windsurfing from Hawaii to California hoax that aired on a local Hawaiian news program. 29-year-old Jay Skaggs shoved off for California today. That's no big deal, except for Skaggs is trying to make the 2,500-mile journey on a windsurfer. Yes, I'm the first person to have crossed the Pacific Ocean on a windsurfer. Uh, I did it in January uh, against the prevailing winds, 40-foot seas. And, uh, you know, again, the media likes to focus on some great athletic event, some hero. So I, I made myself into an athletic hero doing something totally absurd and ridiculous and impossible so far. Walk right. This 1984 hoax was covered by CNN as well. They walk the streets of New York City, ever watchful for those pedestrians who transgress the boundaries of good walking etiquette. They are the men and women of Walk Right, and their mission is to get you if you walk wrong. Then walk. These rules were given to us by pedestrians. We solicit uh, pedestrians and get their opinions. It was totally over the top, and uh, it was plausible. And that's it. You give the media an element of plausibility. It can be far out, they like that, but an element of plausibility, and they'll jump on it. Skaggs attempts to carefully construct a balance between satire and plausibility with his art. But what happens when the prank appears to cross the line of decency? 
Consider this 1994 hoax, which aired on an NBC News affiliate. Animal shelter operator Karen Nagy got this letter in the mail yesterday asking her to sell unwanted animals to a New York company. It horrifies me to think that this would be going on in the United States of America. The letter came from the reportedly unregistered Kia Soju Corporation. And in poor grammar it reads, We like make proposal to your dog shelter to sell us dog. You save money. We cook dog in America. We can dog in America and sell some dog in America in Asian marketplace. It is about racism, and it's to illustrate how our society and our media is racist, and it succeeded in doing that. The response I had was the, the response that I was expecting, total racism. And I didn't even answer the phone. I only had an outgoing message, and I recorded all the calls that came in. And they expressed, go back to your own country, or cut off Asian babies' hands and make Asian babies stew, or you're the problem that's wrong with this country, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then when the media went out to do the story, they actually ambushed an Asian in front of a, his restaurant and showed him the letter, sort of implying or insinuating, you know, have you seen this letter? You know, we know you eat dog. You know, you know have you seen, you know, you know about this, you know? With each hoax, Skaggs continues to bolster his resume of satirical fodder. And it makes some people wonder whether he has an ulterior motive of his own. Some people out there have said that these pranks for you are merely just a way for you to get some face time in television and on the radio and in print and now on the internet. People might say that, um, but that's not how I see it. Uh, I see what I do as my art. It's an art form to me. Uh, it's a vehicle for me to be expressive. It's a means for me to hopefully educate people and uh, certainly satire bites and what I do does offend some people. It challenges some people. It's meant to do that. I'm not meant to be liked by everyone. That's not what I do it for. If it's art, why don't you just keep it in a, in a studio somewhere locked up where it doesn't get in the way of real news? I mean, why, why do you have to push this upon people? What makes you think that the news is exclusive to uh, outside opinion? Are you in this sanctimonious castle where you are dictating policy, you're the gatekeepers of information, and what you present to us you have chosen, and you are right in doing that, and I have no right to criticize or attack that? Excuse me. If I'm a pain in your butt, good. Joey, it really seems like you, you have it in for the media. Why? Um, media can manipulate public opinion. It's influenced by government, by corporations, by religious interests and I think that we should understand how m media works and become more media literate so what I do is uh, to illustrate that by manipulating the manipulators you say that journalists are irresponsible now how can you how can you make such a claim well some journalists are irresponsible like some doctors are irresponsible and some attorneys are irresponsible um, you know it's a profession that requires ethics and due diligence and a lot of journalists um, don't apply the standards of good journalism to getting a story. They bring to the table their own prejudices, their own bias and their own lack of understanding. So it's, uh, it's you know, you're not getting equal, you're not getting truth all the time. Gregory Morris, a print journalist for almost 30 years in both mainstream and independent circles, agrees with the backlash that a journalist receives in the wake of a Skaggs hoax. This is what happens to you when you get foolish, you get sloppy, or you lose your passion for pursuing the truth. But when taking into account that Skaggs' antics take on a derisive and mocking tone... You can't expect the mainstream news media to go out there and pass the message for him. Dr. Catherine Fry author of a book examining television news practices, believes an unavoidable conflict of interest lives within journalists' minds. I think people who are working in corporate news are of two minds. I think that, that there are those who really feel like, you know, they want to do a good job and do a service, but they're also, you know, slaves, if you will, to the shareholder. Skag's sensationalized stories become desired ammunition for television news outfits in their quest to gain and maintain viewers. But are the viewers' best interest being served? Do you feel any responsibility towards the viewers that you are hoaxing, that you're, you're, you're presenting this story as truth, as fact, as real life situations? Uh, yes, I do have a responsibility, and I always reveal the truth. And that's the difference between what I do as an artist satirist 
because I think that the revelation of the truth is what changes consciousness. If the news outlets do not retract your story, then how do the viewers know that this is a hoax? That's the big problem because a lot of, you know, news media do not want to retract a story because they don't want the public to realize that their credibility is an issue here. So they try to, you know, put this out of mind, you know, they don't want to deal with it. When a news channel does a retraction, the audience has an opportunity to understand it, but that doesn't mean that they're getting the whole context of what he's about. I have not seen very many places where I've heard Joey Skaggs say, this is what I'm about, this is what I do. No matter how you slice it, his message is heard by few and understood by even less. Regardless, the book on Skaggs' career is far from being closed.